Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we're going to talk about um, decision making in assembly language and kind of talk about the differences between the structure of that and the structure in high level languages. Um, I got this idea from a question someone asked on the assembly language subreddit. Um, he put up a piece of C code, kind of like this, um, similar to this, a little more complicated. I just simplified it and said, how would you do this in assembly language? And I think what he expected was for someone to just say, okay, do it like this, um, like you would do it in any high level language, just with differences in syntax. And it took some explaining by a few different people to say, okay, you don't do this, you do different things. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to go through here. Um, this is a piece of C code that doesn't really do anything. It just makes a decision. And then I put comments in here to represent the actual work that would be done. Um, if you don't know C, it's pretty straightforward, I think. You're saying if foo, which foo and bar are just values, um, variables. You're saying if foo is greater than bar, then do the stuff here in the curly brackets. If it's not, then you say else, if foo is less than bar, then do the stuff here in between these two curly brackets. Else, so if neither of those is true, then the only other possibility is that foo and bar are equal, so then do the stuff between these two curly brackets. Now I've written it up here in a couple other languages just to kind of show how you get the same sort of thing, even though you have different syntax, in high level language you tend to get the same sort of structure. So here just in shell, we have if foo, and in shell, you, you, your variables have dollar signs in front of them. So we say if foo is greater than, that's the greater than sign in shell. If foo is greater than bar, then do the greater than stuff. That's just a comment to represent the work. Elif stands for else if foo is less than bar, then do the less than stuff. And then else do the equal stuff. And you end with fi, that's the end of an if statement in shell. In Lisp, it looks a little different because instead of if, the Lispish, the Lispy way to do this is with cond, which just stands for conditional. But it's the same sort of idea. You have a test here and then a body to go with the test, and then a test and then a body, and then a test and then a body. So we have if foo is greater than bar, because in Lisp the test, the, uh, the operator comes first. So you have if foo is greater than bar, do greater than. If foo is less than bar, do less than, and otherwise, T stands for true, just meaning do this one if any of the others fail, then you do equal stuff. So I wrote it up here in three different languages just to kind of show that in high level languages, a lot of times, even though things vary, even though things look different, you really have the same kind of structure. You have this idea of do a test, and then based on that test, do a block of stuff. And then if that test fails, you skip ahead to the next test and do that block of stuff. And that's the same in each of these cases. So to go to assembly with that, you have to understand that in assembly, you don't have some of these things built into the language. So you have to make them yourself. And a couple of those things that you don't have are the, well, the main one is this idea of blocks. You don't have a block of code that you can say, do this block of code. You have to create blocks yourself by jumping from place to place. So if you want to do a bunch of code and then stop and go do something else, you have to jump from there to someone else, for, to somewhere else. Or you have to return back to another location. There's not this idea of built into the language anyway. You, you have to build it yourself. The other thing is this idea of simple conditional tests and ifs. You have to create that yourself. And you know, by breaking it down into pieces. And so an if in assembly, at least in 6502 assembly, usually boils down to a compare and then a branch of some sort. A, rel a relative jump, which they all start with B for branch. And the three, can't draw B very well. The three that 
not three, the four that we're going to use typically are branch if not equal, branch if equal, those two are just opposites, and then branch if carry clear and branch if carry set. And there are four others, but you're not going to use those nearly as often, almost never. And so these are the four that we're going to use here for examples. Um, in a comp and so usually you're going to have a compare followed by one or more branches based on the result of that compare. And the compare can also be CPX or CPY. What compare does is it takes the, the argument, whatever the argument to the compare is, and subtracts it from the accumulator. So you take your accumulator value. Let's 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 call this the um, the operand because that's what it is. You take the accumulator and you subtract the operand. Is what compare essentially does. But it doesn't actually do the subtraction. It it, it does the subtraction, but it doesn't put the result anywhere. So it's not like a subtract. A subtract with carry actually puts the result in the accumulator. This doesn't do that. It does the subtraction, but just discards the result. But what it does then is it sets the flags in the status register based on the result of this subtraction. And the flags it'll set are the, the zero flag, the carry flag, and the negative flag. These two both are based on the zero flag. These two are both based on the carry flag. Um, like I say, the negative flag, we're not going to worry about that for right now. But what this does then is if the accumulator minus the operand is zero, it sets the zero flag. And so the zero flag will be equal to one. If the accumulator minus the operand is not zero, it'll clear the zero flag. Okay, and set it to zero. Okay. If... The accumulator minus the operand is a negative number, meaning if it needed to carry, then the carry flag gets cleared. And if the accumulator is greater than or equal to the operand, and so it didn't, and so it's not a negative number, then the carry flag is set. And the way to think about that, or the way I think about it is, if, you, if you've seen any of the previous videos that you always set the carry before you do a subtraction, you imagine that the carry is set here when you do this subtraction and the carry flag gets borrowed then if the subtraction needs another bit to borrow from and so imagine here you have five let's say this let's say the accumulator is five and the operand is three so it's like this let's say you load load the accumulator with five and then compare that to three this doesn't need to borrow. And so the carry flag is going to stay set. Okay. Same thing if you compare it to five. It's going to say five minus five, zero. The zero flag is going to get set to show that the answer was zero, which can seem a little backwards, but that's how it works. If the answer is zero, the zero flag gets set to one. Okay. So you just have to keep it, think of it logically. Don't think of it as numbers, I guess, when you're talking about the flags. But if you're going to compare to something larger, compare to seven, now you need to borrow this carry flag. And so this gets turned into negative two and this goes away. And so the carry flag is now cleared. The zero flag will also be cleared because it's not zero. Okay. So the carry flag, when you so when you do a compare, the carry flag remains set, or the carry flag gets set. It doesn't matter what it was before; it gets set if the accumulator is greater than or equal to the operand, and it gets cleared if the operand is greater than the accumulator. Okay. So. If we break this up here, let's see. So let's say, let's put it this way. If the accumulator 
is greater than the operand, then the carry stays set and the zero flag is unset because they're not equal and so it doesn't the subtraction doesn't make a zero. If the accumulator is less than the operand, then the carry flag gets cleared because it needs to use that bit to do the subtraction and the zero flag is also still zero. If the accumulator is equal to the operand, then the carry flag stays set because again, it didn't need to borrow it to do the subtraction, but now the zero flag is one. And if we look at these, if, if we think about, if we look at this then and look at this, well, we've got the same thing, don't we? We've got the accumulator greater than the operand, foo greater than bar, and so here we have carry equal to one, zero equal to zero, or zero unset might be the better way to say that. Here we have carry unset, zero unset, and down here we have carry one, or carry set, and zero set. So you can see how the logic kind of maps to the same thing here. Now, I'll put on the right side here so I leave myself room. Um, like I said, these, these both have to do with the zero flag. So branch if not equal will trigger if, if it's not equal to zero, meaning if zero, or meaning if the zero flag is unset. Branch if equal triggers when the zero flag is set. And that's why I say it can seem backwards and it might be easy to get confused because branch of equal means if the last operation produced a zero, which sets the zero flag to one. So it doesn't mean the zero flag is zero. It means the zero flag is one. And then branch of carry clear is if the carry is zero and branch of carry set is if the carry is one. Okay. So to write this then in 6502 assembly, we need to, we'll just assume that foo and bar are locations in memory that we can give values from. And so we'll start by loading foo into the accumulator and then we'll compare it, compare it to bar. All right. So this is going to subtract. Remember it takes, when you do a compare, it takes the operand and subtracts it from the accumulator. So we're doing foo minus bar and then, you know, figuring our results based on this. So here's where it starts to look different. You don't have a way to say, okay, if, you know, if foo was greater than bar, do this particular block. And so we have to build that part. So the first thing we can do is, is say, okay, we need to check one of our flags. It doesn't really matter which one we check, but we need to check one. And I'm going to check the zero. I'm going to check for the zero flag being set because that only happens in one of these cases. And so I think that's the simplest way to do it. So let's branch if equal, meaning if the zero flag is one here, I've got that down here, branch of equal had two equals. Okay. And then down here somewhere, I'll have a label equals. And this is where we'll do the equals stuff. Okay. And then down here somewhere, let's just put a label called end because we're going to need that. All right. So we've branched ahead to equals if we're going to do the equals stuff. Now, if it wasn't zero, then we want, then we have these two possibilities. Okay. We've already taken care then of this possibility. Now we have these two possibilities. So these are both with, with the zero flag unset. So we don't need to check that. So now we can check the carry flag. So let's branch if carry, well, second. Um, yeah, that's fine. So there's, there's about eight different ways you can lay this out, just depending on how you like to do it. And there's no real reason to do necessarily one or the other. So this is just one way to do it. So we'll branch of carry clear then to less than. Probably 
shouldn't have to have that all be one word. And so we'll put less than right here. Now, when we get to the end of less than, we can't just go right on into equals, the equals block of stuff, because we only want to do that if we jumped from here, right? So when we get to the end of less than, we need to jump ahead to end. And then here at less than, we can do, these are just comments, less than stuff. And then up here, we could put a label in, even though we don't need it. We could call this greater than. And this would be where we do our greater than stuff. And when we're done with the greater than stuff, again, jump to end. Write that a little better. Okay. So if we follow through the logic then, Let's let's go ahead and say, let's say foo is five and bar is three. Okay, it's gonna do the five minus three thing. First, it's gonna branch if equals. Well, they're not equal. And so the zero flag will not be set. So it's not gonna branch there. So it's gonna come on to here. Then it's gonna check the carry flag. Branch if carry clear. The carry is not gonna be clear because foo is greater than bar. It didn't need to borrow the carry flag to do the subtraction. So it's not going to go, it's not going to branch there either. So it's going to come here. It's going to do the greater than work, the work that we want done when it's greater than, and then it's going to jump to the end. Okay. Let's say it's five. Let's say bar is five. Well, this time it's going to compare and it's going to set the zero flag. And so it's going to branch on equals, or it's going to branch if equal to equals, come down here and do the equals stuff and then go ahead and hit end because end is just going to come after that. If bar is seven, it's going to subtract. It's not going to be equal, so it's not going to branch here. It's going to come here, but now the carry is going to be clear because it's going to have borrowed the carry to do the subtraction. So you know, when it's less than, the carry is clear. And so it's going to branch on carry clear down to less than, and it's going to do the less than stuff and then jump to end. So the main thing I wanted to point out with this is that first of all, you know, you do have blocks, you know, you do end up with blocks of code, just like you have here in between your, you know, in between your curly brackets, but you kind of have to make them yourself by when you get to the end, you have to know where, you know, where you want to go with this. And, you know, this do greater than could be a jump off to a subroutine somewhere. And that's fine, but when you return from subroutine, you still have to deal with the logic of what parts of this stretch of code do I need to do. So that's one thing, is that each of your blocks has to know how to get to the end of the series of blocks. You know, you just you have to do more of the decision making that over here is kind of taken care of for you. And the other thing is just that I wanted to point out it isn't necessarily going to end up in the same order. You could have the equal stuff up here, the less than stuff, the greater than stuff. That all just depends on which, you know, which tests you decide to run first. And it doesn't matter. Um, and a lot of times it will end up seeming to make more sense to do it upside down from the way you would do it in another language, because a lot of times it, in a, in a high level language, it makes sense to think, okay, if this is true, do this stuff. Whereas in assembly, sometimes it makes more sense to say, if this is true, jump ahead, otherwise do this stuff. So the logic's kind of the same, but kind of different, and that can be confusing. You just have to really break it down and go through it and say, step by step, what do I want to happen at this point? And eventually I think you get there. So hope this has been instructive. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.